Mary has agreed to be our patient today. Mary, may we practice uh, doing a physical exam on you today? Yes. That would be great. So the first step we're going to do is assess the room for comfort, making sure that our patient is appropriately draped, um, and also for temperature. Um, and then uh, I want to make sure that I remember to wash my hands. So in order to perform the abdominal exam, we would like Mary to be lying down. And so we're going to make sure that our table is laid back here using this lever on the side to adjust the height. And we'll be just a little bit up from completely flat, maybe about 10 or 15 degrees. And then Mary, I'm going to have you go ahead and lie back okay. down. And while she lies back down, I'm going to pull the footrest out and sort of guide her shoulders as she goes back, making sure that the pillow is at the right height. And then once we have you in the appropriate, comfortable position, um, we're going to start off by uh, opening up your gown and exposing the area of your body that we're going to examine. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to ask Mary to help me. Mary, I'm going to hold your gown here, or your drape. And if you would, I'm just going to have you lift your gown up to expose your abdomen. As you can see, I'm holding this so that it stays down here. Uh, the drape stays down at the bottom and appropriately covering her at the top. And then what we can do is we can actually just roll this gown a little bit in to uh, be able to have the entire abdomen exposed. And Mary, I appreciate your help to hold that up there a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing here by bringing the drape down just a little bit to expose the lower part of your abdomen. And I'm actually um, going to bring that down just like that. So the first step in the physical examination is again inspection. And so I'm going to ins inspect the abdomen and I'm thinking about landmarks and surface anatomy, the bottom of her rib cage, the umbilicus, um, the inguinal um, line. I'm thinking about the liver over here, the pancreas in this area, the spleen, the kidneys, the stomach, the duodenum, the appendix over on this side, and the sigmoid colon over on this side. Female organs and bladder in the center. And as I inspect, I'm looking for um, scars, skin lesions or rashes, I'm looking for any pulsations or asymmetries to the contour of your abdomen. Next we'll auscultate and listen using the stethoscope. I'll start out by using the diaphragm side and we'll warm it up just a little bit so that it's not too cold. I'll listen in all four quadrants right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant, listening for normal bowel sounds, the gurgles that you'd expect to see here uh, in this area, um, and any abnormal sounds. I'm also going to auscultate the aorta just above the umbilicus. Listening for any bruise that I might hear in the abdomen coming from the aorta. And then the renal arteries, which are just off to the side at the level of about the umbilicus. And again, listening for bruise. Next, we're going to check the femoral artery, uh, both palpating and auscultating. This is down in the inguinal crease, and it's a fairly sensitive area, so there's some draping techniques uh, which can help make this a little more comfortable for both you and the patient. Mary, I'd like to check some pulses here at the top of your leg. Okay. I wonder if you'd help me by just bringing down the drape on the side, just okay. on the side here, and bring it down just to expose the top of your leg. Okay. Good. I'm going to get my stethoscope ready. 
And then, Mary, I'm just going to bring my hand out and try to find that pulse here okay. in your leg. And once you find the pulse, you can switch over to the stethoscope. I'm going to use the uh, bell for listening here. Pushing down somewhat to find that pulse. Thank you, Mary. You can bring that back up. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. If you just use your okay. left hand to bring that down and expose the top of your leg. Okay. And you can see that this does expose a part of uh, Mary's pubic hair. That's oftentimes a good landmark to find the pulse, as it oftentimes is just in that area where the pubic hair is starting. And once you find the pulse, again, bring the stethoscope in. And I'm going to listen. For a nice normal pulse. And then you can bring that back up. Okay. Next we'll move to percussion. And we're going to start with percussing the liver. In order to do this, Mary, I would like to be able to expose as much of this right upper part of your abdomen as I can, kind of going right up towards the breast. Okay. And so I'm going to ask you just to kind of hold this gown up um, here, if you may. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And this will allow us to expose the entire area, but still keep her appropriately covered. So I'll start off by percussing uh, the area in the midclavicular line, which is coming right down on this right side here. And I'm going to move upwards from the abdomen to the lower edge of the liver. The percussion technique, again, involves putting the long finger down against the body and lifting the other fingers up and then tapping right over that middle knuckle with two firm fingers in a nice hammer-like fashion. Listening to the hollow sounds of the air in her abdomen. And I'm coming up until I can hear a change where it's solid. And I don't know if you can appreciate the sound differences on the audio, but there's a clear distinction between these two locations. And this helps me to mark the lower edge of the liver. Next, we're going to move to the upward edge of the liver, and we want to again begin percussing in the area of the lung where it's air. And I'm just going to again slide this up just a little bit, and I can hear the air of the lung. And as I come down, there's a little change in the dullness sound here at the upper edge of the liver. And so what I have is an excursion from the upper edge to the lower edge of the liver here in that midclavicular line. It's normal to have the <coughs> liver be up to one centimeter below this costal or rib margin right in this area. Next, we're going to percuss the spleen. So I'm going to let this gown just come down a little bit more on this side if that would be more comfortable for you. And again, the spleen is located way off on the side here. And we're going to do a percussion technique um, starting in the mid-axillary line, which is the line that um, extends from the axilla down the side of the body. So in this area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again do a percussion technique. And I'm going to ask Mary to exhale completely. And then I'm going to ask you to inhale. And with inhaling, the spleen would rise and would become more dull if it was enlarged in that area. So the normal finding would be no change in the tone of percussion of the spleen with inhalation. And if you did notice a uh, difference in uh, tone uh, when she inhaled, that would suggest an enlargement of the spleen. 